Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and today we're looking at the top five Civivi knives, or at least my top five, because it's time for another one brand challenge, where if I had to stick with one brand for all my knife needs, could I do it with Civivi knives? Let's find out. So in this sort of situation, everyone's needs are different and as such, everyone's top five Civivi knives is gonna look a little bit differently. But for me, here's what I need category-wise. I want one, a full-sized folding knife that can do heavier duty work when needed, but it was also not too difficult to carry every day. That's important. I also need a three inch bladed folder. I need that uh, specific length for certain areas I go. Plus it's also just a nice convenient size. I need a formal knife or a gentleman's knife, if you will, for those fancier situations. Moving on to fixed blades. I need two things for when I go camping primarily. I need a larger knife that can do chopping duty as well as splitting wood and just other big knife stuff. And I need a smaller belt knife that I can carry with me just about anywhere. Maybe transition into some uh, everyday carry type of scenarios too, possibly, but not quite the, uh, the utmost importance in that category. But that's what I'm looking for. I've got a few options for each category and I've, I've started narrowing them down from here and I'll take you through my thought process and how I'm going to arrive at my top five Civivi knives. First off, the big folding knife category. Three here, first one, the Conspirator. Awesome knife. So for me, a, a full size knife, I hesitate to call these large knives because they're not like super big. Full size knife means something three and a half inches or bigger. And funnily enough, everything I came, uh, the three I have in this category to choose from today are sitting right at that three and a half inch mark. The first is the Conspirator. Uh, you can get it with a uh, Nitro V blade steel or Damascus blade steel or this Knife Center exclusive in S35 VN is also available. Three and a half inch blade, about 110 bucks for this, the most expensive version. And that comes with a black aluminum handle. The drop point is great. It's gonna do pretty much anything. You know, any, that's always the case with drop point blades. They are very versatile. I can do tactical quote unquote self-defense stuff with this. I can do my outdoorsy stuff if I wanted to take a folder outdoors, even though I've got the fixed blades for that too. And it's just a big, broad, useful blade. The button lock there provides a finger safe closing action, meaning my fingers never cross the path of the sharpened edge when closing the knife. You can also flick it open quite easily with, in conjunction with that button lock. Flipper tab works great, and you've got the fullers right here on each side, which means you can do some other opening methods as well. Feels good in the hand. The aluminum is not slick, a little bit of a matte texture, so you have a decent hold and a deep carry pocket clip reversible for left or right carry. Me, I'm a righty, that's what I need, and this does it quite well. Next up, the Banneret is a really cool knife. It's kind of an upsized Barlow style design. Comes in a bit over $90 with a Nitro V blade. Uh, some other steels are available. I think there's a Damascus option with this as well. This one has stainless steel liners with integral bolsters, a black G10 inlay front and back, and that frame lock for security ball bearings in the flipper mechanism here. Same with the uh, Conspirator, in fact, and really nice flipping action. The blade is full flat ground, nice and thin for enough uh, slicing capability, but it's not something that feels fragile. Same case with the Conspirator. They're kind of similar thicknesses there, uh, but the Conspirator has a little more strength perhaps because it is a taller blade overall, but the Banneret is gonna be a little more agile in certain tasks. It certainly has enough of a hand filling grip right there. All four of my fingers on that, no problem. Also gonna be very easy to carry, not too bulky in the pocket, check that out. Very nice closed up profile. You do just have the, uh, the single opening method here, but you do have that more agility going on. Next up, it's a knife that kind of breaks the rules a little bit for what I am personally, like what I usually gravitate to for this sort of thing. That's because I just, I'm liking this knife so much right now, and that is the Vision FG. Shown here in the new uh, Knife Center exclusive version as well. But again, Nitro V and Damascus are also available, or the S35 VN on this version right here for about 135, or sorry, 139 dollars. Three and a half inch blade. It's a little more specialized of a shape, uh, less you know applicable to any scenario uh, with its kind of you know modified Warncliffe profile here. Thomas, what would you like to call it? Reverse tanta. If you want, 
I'll, I'll allow it. So it, it takes a little bit away in that regard, but it is gonna offer something a little different from the rest of the folding options I have on the table. So I left it on uh, for consideration. It is gonna give you uh, some really powerful or really effective drawing cuts, as well as being able to use it on a surface, perhaps a bit of food prep for a folder. A lot of uh, cutting board work is going to work well with this knife. Plenty of handle length there to hold onto it. This feels a little bit smaller than the other two knives, and indeed it has a little bit less sharpened edge, but technically it's the longest knife here, uh, blade-wise, with a 3.54 inch blade versus a 3.48 inch blade. This could be a really good option. Similar story on the blade stock, not too thick with a high flat grind, very good general purpose uh, geometry. I love the Snex Super Lock here on the back. It's also finger safe like the button lock. It's more ambidextrous, not that that typically uh, matters for me, but it's nice to have just in case I need to use it with the left hand. Full sheet of carbon fiber. This is not a G10 carbon fiber laminate. You can see where it mills down there into the pocket clip. This is a solid piece of carbon fiber, which is quite nice. Excellent action, feels pretty good. Now, before we move on, uh, I did mention all of these were kind of right at the three and a half inch blade length. Uh, you might be wondering why I didn't pick something bigger for my big knife. I'll show you exactly why. I had one knife on the, uh, the table as I was narrowing things down. My, my favorite of the largest knives Civivi makes is the Praxis, available with a button lock now with aluminum handles, similar to the Conspirator that is already on the table, and that is why I took it off. Check this out. Similar materials, uh, Nitro V blade for this, same as the base model of the, uh, the Conspirator, although albeit not with an aluminum handle, 3.75 inch blade versus a three and a half inch blade, but the Conspirator actually gives you more sharpened edge. So that extra reach, that extra length the Praxis gives you doesn't translate into more edge, more cutting power. Maybe a little bit of cutting power because of the leverage you might be able to exert, but I went with the Conspirator because it's gonna be a little bit easier to carry while without giving up any sharpened edge. Plus you can get it in S35VN right now. So that is a, is a really good upgrade. I love you, Praxis, but that's why a bigger knife wasn't on the table. So there you go. Hope that uh, suffices for you. Let's move on to the, uh, the three inch category. And for me, there are three knives in the Civivi lineup that pretty much nail exactly what I would look for for this you know, this genre or, or things that I really gravitate to. Finger safe locking, these all have a bu button lock and a three inch drop point blade and handles that are uh, neutral enough to work with larger hands. I do have slightly larger than hands, so that's something I appreciate. We gotta talk about the Elementum series and the Elementum 2 with its button lock is a shoe in for this category. Uh, this version right here is a Knife Center exclusive with S35 VN steel for just under a hundred bucks which is a pretty good value. Uh, other steels available in the series uh, for less money, uh, you've got Nitro V, uh, and then there is also a Damascus option. It's the same for all, all the stuff I've shown so far. Drop point blade, hollow grind, very thin behind the edge. In fact, that's something I should mention, Civivi does exceptionally well across the board. Very thin, very sharp edges. Very neutral handle, deep carry pocket clip, not a reversible clip in this case, even though a, a button lock works well in the left hand, and you've got that button lock with very good flipping action. The Elementum is like definitely the icon, the backbone of the Civivi lineup because they've it's been so successful. They recently just made uh, their one millionth Elementum. So that's a lot. I don't even have time to count that high. But there you go. That is one option for me right there. We've also got the Altus. Now I've liked this knife since they had the G10 versions, but the new aluminum versions, while I didn't consider it like a, a huge upgrade when they came out in hand, I really like the aluminum here. It's not slick, it feels more premium than the G10 for sure, and it's only about $72 for it. You've got the deep carry clip, you've got the Nitro V blade steel in this case, a little more acute than the Elementum. Nice action, thumb studs in this case, no flipper tab, but less flipper tab to get in the way potentially, that might come into play later. Excellent choice right here. Uh, I think Damascus is also an option uh, in this series, and you know, like I said, yes it is, and uh, G10 is also an option. And last but not least is a knife that if you were to cross the Elementum and the Altus, you would come up with something like 
the qubit probably. So here you go. Uh, this is the Damascus option, just because I wanted to show one of those. Uh, but say it with me, kids in the back, Nitro V is also available, which overall is just a great steel that is relatively affordable. It's decently tough, holds an edge pretty well. It's stainless. And the thing I like about the toughness of that steel is the edge tends to be pretty stable from chipping and that sort of thing. But anyway, here's the Qubit, uh, about $80 and some change for this Damascus version, but the regular versions start uh, in the mid 60s. You've got a very thin blade stock here compared to the other two, bit thinner with a full flat grind. This is gonna be the most efficient slicer of the three. You've also got the most accommodating handle here. I'll compare it there to the Elementum. You can see you've just got more. And compared to the Altus, which doesn't look as neutral, you've got, again, just more to hold on to. Reversible clip in this case is nice. The Altus has that too. You've got the thumb studs and the button lock, and you've even got the tang of the blade here functions as a can opener, if that's your thing. So technically a multi-tool. That's pretty fun. Those are my three choices for the three inch folder. Now, the formal knife, the gentleman's knife. Uh, two Ben Peterson designs actually coming down uh, as two of the three options. The first is the baby banter in the Damascus and carbon fiber version. This one is a carbon fiber laminate, so it's a single layer of carbon fiber on top of G10. About 85 bucks for this uh, 2.34 inch blade, but Nitro V is also <laughs> available. Um, I briefly considered actually throwing the new Warncliffe bladed version into this category, but you would definitely have to uh, kind of upgrade the scales on this for it to feel gentlemanly or feel formal. The purple micarta here with its contours is very nice. I like it a lot. It's just not, not super gentlemanly. So just, a, just an aside, that is also an option. What's nice about this as a complement to the other two categories is this would make a great, very compact option that could fit in a fifth pocket in those five pocket jeans or five pocket pants. If you're wearing a five pocket pant that's not jeans, that's a cool option. And yet you can still get a pretty solid hold on it. Three and a half finger grip for me, thanks to the integrated choil there, finger sized around the pivot, which lets you put that blade to work. Next up is the, uh, the newest uh, Ben Peterson Civibi and that's the Sendi right here, uh, specifically the wood handled version with the black blade. And that's the, the fun thing with a lot of Civivi's lineup is depending on the materials, some of the other knife series that they make can flex into this gentleman's knife category. This is the one I, I happen to like. I like the agility of this narrower blade, uh, 2.83 inches. I like the drop point, but a spay is also available, but those get away from the more gentlemanly variant, I think. About 65 bucks and some change for this one. Nice thin blade steel, full flat grind, neutral handle here as well. Something I appreciate from the uh, three inch category, but that's nice too on the gents category. Black pocket clip here, and that kind of gets to the, my one hesitation on this, I'm not sure if it's gonna make it through, we're gonna have to see. Is the black blade here, is it a little too tactical feeling? I'm not sure it is with the, uh, the black, or uh, against the, uh, the wood option here, but that could be a factor. Last thing you see on this is, in kind of Swiss Army knife inspired style, you've got a pair of tweezers and a toothpick, a metal toothpick actually, here on the back side. So that's always pretty fun too. Just a really nice knife. You've got a subtle flipper tab in this case, so you have that nice snappy action without having a flipper tab sticking out, either in the closed or open position. That could also be a downside too, because it's harder to so subtly open this knife, although you can do it, but you don't have those thumb studs to be more deliberate. Yeah, it's definitely gonna take two hands to do a deliberate opening. Otherwise, you just got a nice flick. Last but not least here, the Foldus, an Ostop Hell design, specifically the copper handled version, 79 bucks. This is a really sweet design. 2.67 inch blade, Nitro V steel, thin drop point, high flat grind, very nice. I love the classy look of these brushed, like patinaed and brushed copper handles. And I love the classiness of the pocket clip here, this wire deep carry clip, great option for a gentleman's knife. This is a double detent style of non-locking folder, that detent joint. So there is you know, no locking safety on this knife. That could be a factor. You do have a top style flipper though. 
lets you flip the blade open quite nicely. And you do have a place for your finger to rest here where if the blade were to close, your finger's in the way a little bit. It's not a, uh, a supreme level of confidence that that gives you, but it is something which is quite nice. All right, let's move on to the fixed blades. We'll start with the big chopper and there's really only one option in the Civivi lineup. So spoiler alert, this is the, the knife I'm gonna wind up going with, and that's the Arata. Here it is, a uh, Massier Torbe design. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name actually, so I apologize if I'm getting that wrong. About 189 bucks and change. You've got about seven, a bit over seven inches of sharpened edge here. How you actually measure what this blade length is, however, is kind of a mystery. It's one of those uh, unanswerable questions. And Speaking of that blade, it's the only one thing I might change if I were uh, designing this. They went with D2 steel here, which is a fine steel, but on something like a chopper where toughness is gonna be more important than edge retention, I might've made a different choice. But anyway, you can kind of think of this as kind of a knife hatchet hybrid. You've got this long G10 handle with enough reach to do some lighter, or some medium duty chops. You can definitely uh, hack through some branches with this. It might make a decent butchery tool in a hunting situation or food prep because there is enough rock to this edge where you could, you know, do some cutting board stuff with this. That could be pretty fun. And then you can also get up choke up right here on the blade and do some smaller work when you need to. A smaller knife will certainly work better for that sort of thing, but it's good to have options. Like I said, I may, I may have cho chosen to switch the steel around if I were specking this out, but I think I would have a ton of fun with this as a larger chopper. Comes with a Kydex sheath, even has a belt carry option. Not that I would particularly want to carry something this large on my belt. That's where the next segment comes in. Now for me, the kind of idealized form factor I'm looking for for this would be something like a four inch drop point that could do wood carving, could do camp craft, could do hunting stuff when needed, maybe flex into everyday carry utility. Uh, but again, that's second, slightly secondary. Um, and everyday carry fixed blade should have some tactical applications in my mind anyway. So there's two knives in the lineup that kind of hit those things and that is the Elementum series. They made a fixed blade and the new Storm Ridge. Both really cool. What do we got here? So this is the more premium version of the Elementum fixed blade. They've got flat scale D2 versions. This is uh, a G10 contoured handle, non-removable scales with 10 CR stainless, about 85 bucks with a leather sheath. Feels decently comfortable. You've got a hollow grind on this roughly four inch blade. And I'm gonna start narrowing things down for you right here now before we get to the next stuff, however. When it comes to the Storm Ridge, we've got Micarta handles here. Uh, actually, a few G10s are also available. Nitro V blade, just under four inches long. Kind of a smaller handle for someone like me with slightly larger than average hands. It might be a bit too small. Uh, I think for folks that have uh, that do have smaller hands, this could be a little, a, a better option. And if you wanted more thickness, these are removable scales. So you could actually, you know, cut some plastic liners if you wanted to and thicken these, uh, these handles up if you wanted a little bit more. These come with a Kydex sheath, which is quite nice. And on the back of that, you've got the Civivi T-Clip designed by Bob Trezola to kind of like, you know, enhance or uh, further refine the Bladetech tech lock concept. Horizontal, vertical, you can mount it different ways which is always quite nice. Next up, we've got easily the nicest fixed blade that Civivi makes, uh, and that's the Teton Tickler. It has more of like an old school custom knife vibe, really, than most of the rest of the uh, production lineup uh, that Civivi brings. It has, in, in a way, it doesn't feel like a Civivi the way the rest of these knives do, but I really like it. Five and a half inch blade, uh, 220 bucks. So it's a little bit bigger uh, than I might normally consider for this particular uh, slot, but in com combination with that errata, would that still be a good combination? Worthy enough to be on the table anyway. Uh, D2 steel here, excellent feel in the hand. You've got G10, which is polished up really nicely, nickel silver guard and butt plate, and the Civivi logo sits there on the plate, rather uh, than looking like a, uh, a screw down point where a lot of uh, knives of this construction style can sometimes have. Instead, you got that nice aesthetic point there, which is pretty cool. And this also comes with a simple leather sheath here as well. Last but not least, I got one bonus pick uh, in this category, and that is the Bob Terzola designed Tamashi. 
Definitely more intended, I think, as a tactical knife first, but you got a just over four inch upswept trailing point blade here. This would make a great camp knife, quite honestly. Uh, D2 steel, very affordable, about 68 bucks and some change. That comes with a Micarta handle. Uh, G10, I believe, is also an option. Yep, sure thing. Really nice. And it feels pretty good in the hand, too. Not as hand filling as the Teton Tickler, but pretty nice. Not quite a full tang. Uh, with my magnets, it stops about right here. Still plenty strong enough, I would think, for, uh, for what I would use this knife for, but something to keep in mind if you want that full tang design. Feels decent in the hand, like I said. I like the uh, thumb ramp here. Gonna make it real nice for carving. In fact, of the four of these knives here for this, this might be the best carver uh, for my hand anyway. Kydex sheath with this one as well. All right, let's start eliminating some things. Uh, since we're on fixed blades and you already know I'm using the Arata, I'm gonna eliminate two fixed blades right off the bat, and that is the Storm Ridge and the Elementum. It comes down to the ergonomics for me, which your mileage may vary. The Storm Ridge, like I said, a little too small for me, not thick enough to be my primary outdoor belt knife. As an everyday carry fixed blade, this would be a much more compelling option for me. It's definitely more comfortable than pretty much any folder out there, and it's narrow enough and light enough, and with that Kydex sheath, it's gonna be easy to carry. I think this, the Elementum series would also make a better everyday carry knife than you know a general purpose outdoors knife for the same reasons. It's a little bit bulkier, a little bit heavier than the Storm Ridge, but to me, it, the biggest reason why I'm taking out is that flipper tab right here. If this knife didn't have to carry over the uh, things that made the Elementum flipper carry over that identity, I think it would have been a better knife. Holding it like so behind the protection of that finger guard, which I do appreciate, however, you are put a, lot, a long way away from the edge. So if you're doing carving, you're gonna be missing that prime location and to choke up around that is not particularly comfortable and I'd rather have something more stout than a hollow grind for an outdoors knife. So these two knives, I'm not gonna throw them, but bye. That brings us down to the Teton Tickler and the Tamashi. I gotta go with the niceness of the Teton Tickler. Sorry, sorry, Bob T. This is just such a special feeling knife. It is so nice in the hand. It looks more expensive than it is, even though it's not an inexpensive knife. Like I said, it's about 220 bucks. That would be an awesome thing to have on my hip, schlepping about the woods, having fun. The guard uh, is not so big that it gets in the way. I'm not usually a fan of rear guards here, but I can get around that without too much trouble for that carving. You're right there behind the edge. Everything's ground super well. Definitely feels like a special knife. And these two in combination, I could have a lot of fun camping with these two bad boys. All right, let's start now for folders. Let's start with the three inch category because that's probably the one I'll be carrying most often. And yeah, let's narrow things down. Uh, let me pick up the two aluminum handled folders together here. And I've made a decision between these two. There are advantages to each, however. The cubit is nice and narrow. There's no uh, liners on this aluminum handle. And as such, you do have a slimmer carry than the Altus right here. And you also have a more accommodating handle, like I mentioned. But with as thin as this blade is, as much as I like that, I know I'm gonna have a thinner blade uh, or a pretty thin blade in the gentleman's knife category. So I'm gonna step away from that a little bit. I was leaning that way already. And then when I compared the amount of edge on the Altus versus the Cubit, check that out. Just way more sharpened edge on the Altus. And on a small knife, this three inch blade, that's not nothing right there. So we're gonna take the Cubit out of consideration. So now we're down to the Altus and the Elementum. And I have made a decision here too. Before coming into this, I thought for sure the Elementum. It might not be like the most inspired looking design. It's a fairly simple shape. Simple is often good, however, because it just plain works. And it just comes down to that. It just plains work. However, I'm gonna go with the Altus and here's why. When holding the knives, either one of them, it's kind of a three and a half finger grip in your standard position. When you're holding it like that, you know, line them up right there, you're closer to the back of the edge on the Altus because you get more edge on the Altus. Like, just like with the Cubit, the Elementum gives you less sharpened edge. Even though you do have the option of the, uh, the improved edge retention of the S35 on this knife center exclusive. So you're already 
closer to more edge on the Altus. I like that. And if I did want to choke up on the Elementum or the Altus to get closer to it, this, because of that flipper tab, is less comfortable than getting up close behind the Altus. And then the aluminum versions here just feels really nice. So I'm going to go with the Altus. I think the full size folder here is going to be the hardest uh, for me to narrow down. So I'm going to go to the, uh, the formal knife category first. I'm going to take the, uh, the baby banter out just because like the, the fancy version right here, as nice as the design is, the uh, Damascus here just feels a little bit busy visually. And I think that would you know, wind up getting on my nerves a little bit personally, just not my personal vibe or style. So that one's out. So now it comes down to Ostop Hell Foldus versus Ben Peterson Sendi. I think between the two, I think I like the Sendi a little bit better, but I think the Foldus makes a better gentleman's knife. Does that mean I'm gonna choose it? Stick with me. Just aesthetics and classiness wise, I think the Foldus would be a better choice. You've got that wire pocket clip, which is way more subtle, way less, you know, just way classier than the painted black style clip on the Sendi. The materials on this are really nice. However, I'm going to wind up going with the Sendi. Would I prefer a, uh, a satin finished blade? For me personally, yes. But I don't think the black, uh, black stone wash technically here is so out of bounds or, or too tactical to overcome the nice wood handle scales here, which is uh, Gaborsha wood, I should say, I uh, should mention. It looks really good. I like how thin the blade stock is. In this case, it is a little bit thinner than the Foldus, and that's gonna make a good complement to the Altus when used in conjunction there. This is a little smaller, little narrower, little thinner in the blade, but could still you know, flex into that everyday carry roll quite easily. I may probably have to uh, make a decision on that pocket clip. I might go with uh, something aftermarket or you know, steal something from another Civivi that's not painted black. I don't know. Let me, guys, uh, let me know what you guys think of that option right there uh, for some modifications. But the Sendi is just, it's really sweet. I love the Agile Blade, and it is my pick to accompany the Altus in this top five scenario. So that leaves the full-size category. To recap, you've got the Conspirator, big, broad, drop-point blade, should do everything I want. The finger-safe action is always quite nice. You've got the Banneret, just as much size, just as much sharpened edge, if not as premium steel available, more agile in the blade department, still hand filling enough. And there's something to be said for the uh, slightly more secure feeling uh, or slightly you know, bigger feeling of security with that frame lock versus a button lock. It's less accidental chance of uh, disengaging that lock while you're using the knife. And then you've got the Vision FG which is a little bit outside the bounds of that, that general purpose drop point I usually look for, but could provide a, a pretty compelling counterpart to the other two knives we're already picking. Hmm. This is, this is the toughest one, uh, honestly. And I have made a decision, but I can't even tell you... It's, it's, it's nothing the other knives did wrong. We'll put it there first. I can't point to any one of these and say, you know, like the, in the other categories where it's like, this is a little bit better at this, so this is the choice. That doesn't exist here. I would be happy with all, any of these three. Right now you're saying, get to the point, David. Tell us which one it's going to be. I'm going to go with the Vision FG. It maybe doesn't do, like, the... This, it doesn't carry the same big knife vibes or bigger knife vibes that these other two do. But because this is a top five and not just one pick in isolation, I like, you know, the variability or the, the varied use cases that these three knives together are going to bring me. So that's going to be the choice. All right, there you go. Let me know what you thought. Uh, let me know what your top five Civivi knives would be. Let me get these out of the, out of the frame here line these up. There we go. I would be pretty happy with this as my, uh, my only five knives if I had to do it. Discounting multi-tools and, uh, and kitchen knives, of course, as always, because we have to do that to keep things interesting. 
Let me know your top five Civivi down in the comments. If you want to get your hands on any of these Civivi knives, check out the links in the description, which will take you to knifecenter.com. And don't forget about our long running knife rewards program while you're there, because the least we can do when you buy one of our knives is give you some free money to spend on a future one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. We are signing off. See you next time.